All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it is time for another student of the gun radio. Don't you feel fortunate? You darn well should. All right, hippo guns. What? Yes, hippo guns. Like people, like you mean like an H and H Magnum or a Weatherby? Eh, we'll see. Uh, and Green Mountain Boys. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Uh, we've got a dirt coat finished firearm segment for you. Brownells bullet point. We got a homeroom. And then we're going to talk about, uh, well, we're going to talk about pop music and Green Mountain Boys. It's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. And we're leading up into the Memorial Day weekend, the long weekend coming up. I hope you enjoy it. Hope you're going to go out and do something enjoyable. And in the meantime, I'm going to be quiet and let Zach play that super cool intro music. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up to your beloved host, the Pin Hand of America, Professor Paul Martin. All righty, daddy. All right. So let's, uh, I guess we'll start from the beginning. Uh, if you are in the Discord, and hi, hi, hi there. Uh, we have a Discord. It's uh, studentofthegun.com slash Discord channel. You can jump in and watch us do this show live. Yeah, sometimes you you might get a little bit more than you bargained for. But that's okay. That's all right. We got Jared in the studio. He's sitting in front of the books, and he has some voice this week. I have a little bit of voice this week, and we actually have a guest that just um, requested admission to the waiting room. Ah, there we go. So if you would like, I can go ahead and do that right now. All right, go ahead and bring him in. Okay. There All we right. go. We can hear him. Standing in front of the official X-Insurance helicopter. That's right. Yeah, I just got back from the boat race which is down in uh, Cocoa Beach, so... Hard life, my friend. Well, it's flying for three days straight all day long. It's fun, but yeah, definitely have to pay attention to the birds and other aircraft. There's banner <laughs> planes flying above you. There's all kinds of going on. So yeah. <laughs> so we got Rick Lindsay from X Insurance. He was with us a couple of months ago. And uh, we're going to, uh, well, Jared has a battery of questions for him, or at least a few questions. Uh, and thank you again for joining us. I, I'm guessing since you've got blue skies behind you that you're in Florida. Yep. yep. Yeah. Flew from Cocoa Beach to Naples this morning. Had a little weather, but we made her. Well, you know, you can come back to Utah. The sun's out and the snow has melted. Coming back tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Every time I, I go to visit the kids, I leave Vernal and I go through Provo Canyon and I look over at the airport and I wonder, is Rick's plane sitting on the tarmac? It will be tomorrow. It will be tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. They don't uh, like it up there. You know, they don't, they don't, they want to close the airport. It's like everything else. In Heber? Yeah. Why would you do yeah. that? I don't know. Hell, they want to close it here in Naples, too. There's people. I just say, you know, the airport's been there a lot longer than anybody who's buying new houses there. So yeah, That's uh, right. Airport rules. Yeah. Don't buy a house across the street from an airport and complain about the noise. It was there before people, you. Most people think it's cool, but there's always a couple. Mm. Yep. We always uh it's same with ranges man you you know you somebody builds a house across from a range and they expect the people to stop shooting You're like but right. but we but we've been here shooting for like decades and so no <laughs> um well, the reason i wanted to bring rick on today was talk a little bit about um this email that i received and i'm i'm looking for it right now but i received an email and it was essentially a company had done a study and I don't know who they polled or how many people they polled because uh, that information wasn't available. But the results of the study, to shorten this story, the results of the study were that the people that responded to this thought that insurance companies should be proponents of um, gun control 
And the method of that would be using um, the politicians to create laws, essentially lobbying for rules to be put in place that say, well, you have to, as a firearms owner, you have to have an individual policy for each gun that you own. And so I thought this was kind of ridiculous and, you know, being outside of the insurance industry, maybe there's something that I'm missing here, but uh, I thought it was ridiculous to have an individual policy for anything that you would have multiple items for, right? You'd have one policy that covers all of them. Um, And I also thought, well, why are, why are people trying to get companies involved in lobbying to restrict people's rights? Right. Cause that's what it is. It's, the the insurance companies, if they decided to go this route, they would be saying, hey, we're going to lobby for this rule. Um, it's going to increase our profits, and it's also going to reduce your liberty, but we're fine with that. Uh, so I wanted to pull Rick on and, and get your opinion on the individual policies for each firearm, but then also, you know, what what is there, what's going on that there's an overarching um need for people to think that individual private companies should be lobbying for uh, restricting liberty? Well, I don't know. I think it's lawyers. You know, lawyers make up all the rules. Kind of like boat racing. Somebody else makes up all the rules and you have to learn to play within them and win. So that's the legal system. Insurance you no, know, I don't. I, I know what's out there, and it's very limited and restricted. You know, if you form your own pool of money to defend yourself and stand your own ground, you know, you can self insure, you wouldn't have exclusions. All right. If it was a flood, you'd cover it. If it was a gun, you'd cover it. If it was. You know, a bow and arrow that you shot somebody with in self-defense, you know, the, the firearms policies are limited. And you can look at, um, you know, dog liability. You know, dog bites are a big thing. and Insurance companies want to exclude them. Insurance commissioners so, say that they can't. So over the years, it's a campaign to where now they're allowed to or provide very limited coverage. So... You know, now it's going on firearms. It'll continue on everything. I think before on another program, I said, you know, the answer is I insure people. All right. If you have a hundred guns, I'm covering them all for liability, right? On a scale, on a physical damage or loss or theft stuff, um, you would schedule the ones you want to insure. And, you know, some may be an agreed special value or something like that, but. Yes. You know, people need to worry about their liability first. That's the biggest risk we all have. And then if you, you know, own property, obviously I think you need coverage that covers all risks. And that's kind of the way that I approach it. Um, you know, the people that are trying to change this and make it you know profitable for somebody else and or take people's rights away, because I think you know, there's probably people who um, both benefit with different goals in mind. Some want to take your rights away. Some want to regulate you. And, you know, that's why I think self-regulation is, is the best thing. Um, you know, you buy crappy insurance and expect it to help the legal trend stand its ground and go to court and win again, you know, the insurance companies are going to do what they always do. Like in the Bushmaster case, you know, they go run to lawyers, hire lawyers, pay lawyers, and then they settle when they shouldn't. And, you know, that's why a lot of people get self-insured or go self-insured like Disneyland, you know, they, they self-insure the first hundred million. So, um, you know, we have basically a personal liability policy that, you know, we have to do a, a review and look at what you have, auto, you know, homeowners, renters, whatever. And then we need to know your work, home, and play activities. Do you have a dog? Do you have shoot, you know, bow and arrow? Do you shoot, you know, 
Anons, what do you do? And if you schedule it, you know, as a work, home, or play activity, we're going to make sure that's included. Um, you know, we're going to obviously want it to be done in a, like there's guys with fast boats that drink and drive. I don't want to insure them. You know, they end up hurting other people. And, you know, that's what underwriting is called. And everybody in the insurance world wants to not touch anybody, not talk to anybody. And there's buyers who I say, well, get on the phone. Let's, let's, you know, I have questions and they're like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I just want to go online and fill something out. I, you need to make it easy for me. And I'm like, I don't, I, that's dumb to me. I'm not going to make it easy for people I don't know and, st- and tell them, I'm going to back them up. I'm going to stand with them. So you do really have to underwrite people, not firearms or, you know, tow trucks. That's all insurance companies do is look at things in buckets. And they try and, you know, put as much in there. They don't make money. Their theory always is, well, let's write more, right? And at some point, we'll make money. I mean, I'm a dumb guy. And I say, look, if you can't make money when you're small, you probably can't do it, you know, by getting bigger. It gets tougher to manage more stuff and more people. So, you know, I think there's a lot of overpromise, oversold, never banking on the black swan event. And, you know, that's the, my life, 40 years, you know, and I meet good people and go through tough times with them, but come out the winner. And, uh, you know, they, they in the industry, benefit for years because we do the right thing like the rafting case i took to the supreme court in california um you know in the late 80s where everybody said release forms are no good you can't defend you know well we took it to the supreme court in that case sane versus whitewater voyages is the cited case nationwide and has benefited everybody on you know the the on on the side of where you're getting attacked when you're not liable or negligent. You know, some guy died in your boat of a heart attack. That's not, you didn't add risk to that. Lawyer would argue did. He would say, you know, you shouldn't have taken him on the trip. He had a heart condition. What kind of medical questions do you ask? And, uh, you know, our approach is, look, that's on you. If you just had double bypass surgery and you want to go down the Grand Canyon, we want to take you. And we do ask medical questions. But it's up to you to disclose it. And, you know, we take quadriplegics down the Grand Canyon. We just have to know it. Don't show up, you know, not disclosing any of it and threaten to sue us, which people have done. And, you know, I get the phone call from the outfit. What should I do? They're going to sue me. I'm like, yeah, tell them to go pound sand. You know, let them sue you. We'll, We'll win. You know, but the threat of litigation is a is that a threat and you know i don't like being threatened uh and if we did something wrong we just assume do the right thing which you know that's our approach on any case where you know our auto or our insured is at fault because sometimes things happen in a way where you know you are at fault or somewhat at fault and you should just step up and do the right thing you shouldn't hire a third party or a lawyer to, you know, waste people's time for two or three years, get paid a shit ton of money, and then tell you to settle everything. So, you know, to me, it, it, if, if you're dealing with terrorists, like I have for 40 years in the legal business, not all lawyers are terrorists, but unfortunately, you got to play with all the players on the field. And when they are, you don't negotiate. It's war. And I need... Good people. That's why you need to underwrite people. Yeah, when you were saying earlier about uh, not knowing the person that you're you're defending, but you're you're going to bat for them, so you really need to know them. It uh, to apply that to my life, it would be akin to a martial artist being uh, in in the cage and wondering if his corner is going to be there to support him, but he doesn't actually know the corner, right? The corner didn't take time to get to know the fighter and his style. And right. it's kind of the same thing there. It's like, you can't expect somebody to support you the best that they possibly can. If, if they don't know 
you as a person or your activities or, or whatever that is, you know, it applies differently to some things, but uh, over, overall, that's a good general rule. Yeah. And, you know, I think I, when, when I was young and trying to start businesses or buy cars or whatever, you know, you wanted a bank, a local bank, you'd go into your local bank and, you know, those days we had them now, I bet they were just fake. Too. They, they didn't care. It was a box thing, right? They're doing their underwriting. They either like you or you don't like you. Um, they don't know whether you're a person of your word or not and whether, you know, they think, well, this guy's never going to pay back. Well, because somebody has bad credit, if you actually knew them and their story, it might just be a timing thing. And they're the guy who will pay you back when, you know, somebody else with a good credit score may get you know, in a bad spot and be the guy who doesn't. So I think touching and actually knowing your customers gives you a lot better chance to make happy customers. You know, if some guy's uh, a jerk, um, you know, I, I don't want to insure him at any price. I really don't. Um, you know, you don't want to go to bat for jerks, you know. so Yeah, that affects your reputation. Right. Yeah, and you know, you want to. Everybody should have that reputation. The insured should have a reputation of we do the right thing, we do everything above board, above the standard of care, and their insurer should say we do the same thing, and that's why we fight everything that's not, you know, right. Whether it's attacking our gun rights by, or you know, our personal rights, getting arrested in Chicago, you know, that's no fun, and you can either come out of it on top or on bottom and you know most people are crushed by it because they can't pay the bills they don't know what to do they don't know how to navigate it um you know i didn't know how to do it either but i sure as hell wasn't going to be cheap at a time where i needed to make sure you know we did the right thing and assembled the right team and came out on top so to your martial arts <laughs> yeah <laughs> now, yeah yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting thing. Well, what I know now, right? You know, we've had Rick on here twice, and what we know now is that if every insurance company is led by somebody like Rick, we don't have to worry about the insurance companies lobbying to to restrict our rights because he's there to he's at, he's at bat for us, you know, for his customers, and uh, which which is that's something that is refreshing in today's day and age because you see a lot of these companies that choose to go the route of the, you know, I would call them the loud minority, the, uh, the woke crowd. You have a lot of companies that go that direction because they think it's the right direction to go for their customer. But then, you know, they find out that, Hey, that really wasn't the right direction to go because their stock drops by 20, 30%. And then they're like, Oh crap, we went the wrong direction. How do we fix this? And at that point you've broken the trust of the customer, which is really difficult to get back. So it's refreshing to, uh, to hear those words from somebody that that's running the company. So who do you guys think, or, you know, is it, do you think there's insurance companies pushing this or do you think it's, you know, just other companies that are in the woke mode and they don't like firearms. So they're trying to pass legislation that requires insurance. Yeah. That was the um, question that I was going to ask you. Cause I don't know very many people in the industry, and I'm sure that you do, right? So I don't know if this is just a company that's running a um, a poll to get eyeballs and, and sell ads or whatever, or if it's actually a real thing that could be a threat to liberty, but also um, property. Well, I think definitely it's a trend, right? I mean, there's people who don't like firearms, don't want it, and, you know, insurance companies... Um, reinsurers, if you were forming an insurance company, you know, the, the reinsurance they offer to insurance companies would exclude firearms and gunsmithing. Those are standard exclusions, so it's a specialty. And, um, you know, it's definitely under pressure. Obviously, if you can't make bullets and you can't have those clips and you can't have those guns, you know, that that's going to affect them in a positive way that they, they don't want you to have all that stuff um 
So, but you know, the insurance companies don't want the risk. I can tell you that. You know, big habitational accounts that I write in big cities, you know, they used to get a lot of insurance really cheap. And then, you know, two drug dealers would shoot each other in the parking lot um, doing a drug deal or even in the apartment they rent. And, you know, he would get sued and his insurance company would pay. And so then they canceled him and he can't get insurance anymore. I've insured him for six years now. And, you know, we haven't had a shooting, I don't believe. But if we did, we would defend it. We've had a lot of other claims that we handle, you know, you know the, the, we want to keep his tenants happy. If it was our fault, great. If not. And, you know, they all have to have rental insurance. And if they have dogs, they have to have coverage that includes the dog. If not, um, they basically collect another $10 from them and provide them dog insurance. Because, you know, if you own a dog and you don't insure the dog and it bites somebody and I'm your landlord, guess who they go after? The landlord. So, you know, it's always like trying to pile up as many people as possible. And um, so we actually help him provide that coverage. And, you know, it's a strategy. It's a plan so that when the black swan event happens or the what could happen does happen, we all know our role. We know that we're going to do these things, which is, you know, in any accident, you contact the people and you discuss it with them. Um, some people don't want it. So I'm going to talk to a lawyer and I would just say, okay, but here's our information. You know, you don't have to get a lawyer. If if we're liable, you know, we're willing to make you whole, which is what we're obligated to do. Um, and, you know, we just need to see if we can work it out. And there's some people you can't, but it, uh, it's beneficial to set that up and show that you attempted to do the right thing. And then as you go through court, however long it takes, or even settlement negotiations, you have that argument on your side as being the reasonable one. You know, when you ask somebody, well, how much, you know, I put it in, you're how much is it? Five grand, ten grand, well, how much damage is there? So, oh, I need a rental car. Okay. You know, how much? And and they won't take that. And you say, well, why not? It's like, well, because the lawyer tells me he can get me more. I'm like, well, yeah. He would tell you that because that's what lawyers have to say. Mm -hmm. He'll tell you he gets you less, right? So, um, you know, they, uh, they I tell them, look, if, if it's 10 grand, if a lawyer gets you 50 and it takes three years and he bills you 20 and he takes half of the remainder, you end up with less money and three years of your life gone. So, and I know that's true. And again, most people hate insurance but they hate lawyers too they go to lawyers when they hate us more and you know it's kind of a daily balancing act <laughs> and we we have the power to put the lawyers on the bench as good insurance companies again i you know i wish everybody would do it the right way but um, they're too big and old and slow and there's no real decision maker, you know, there's actuaries, there's a reinsurer, they'd have to change everything. So, you know, with all of this stuff, obviously opportunity for small banks and small insurance companies should be there, but nobody seems to want to put money in the business anymore. Everybody wants to be a non-risk taker. That's what's popular in all the insurance stuff is you just provide a service and you get paid handsomely for it and it makes unhappy customers but you know you, i'm just servicing the customer it's not me the company company is this big pile of money somewhere and you know you can't talk to anybody that's around the pile of money so it's pretty simple you know it's a huge opportunity right now for people to step up and take risk. And I kind of keep prodding all the big brokers, Aon and you know, the guys in London, that they're, they're growing, they're providing new cyber products. But, you know, people over here can't get homeowners insurance and property insurance. They should put some chips in the game because, you know, they, they all like to tell me what I should be doing. And 
obviously I don't do what they tell me to do <laughs> because if I did, I would be broke like all of the Florida homeowners companies down here. I never wrote Florida homeowners until, you know, recently because there's no market. Same with California homeowners. Um, you know, all the big boys ran away from California when, you know, the fires came and slapped them. Too much and, risk, they say. Well, but that's the business you're in. And oh, by yep. the way, you're an expert. You know, you, you should have kind of seen this stuff coming instead of always selling cheap, cheap insurance, with, you know, with a bunch of exclusions. The people down here now, they paid 200 grand for their, you know, whole complex of condos, maybe 12 million in, in value. Now it's 800,000. So it's four times their deductible went from 2 million to 4 million. So I'm like, well, you have less insurance and you're paid four times as much, <laughs> you know? And of course people just want to pay what they used to pay. They're like, you know, well, why, why is it changing so much? And it's like, it's not rocket science. It's just math. You know, it's, it's really that simple on the liability side with firearms and all that. If, you know, on the case I had where it wasn't our fault, or it wasn't our insurance fault, we were good partners. Um, guy was in a wheelchair, unfortunately, because he hit our truck and uh, you deal with that stuff. But again, you, you can't pay him the million dollars. If you were at fault, you'd pay him the million dollars. That would be the right thing to do. Um, but in that case, they think they can bluff you in the in the pay and then if you pay a million it's just math right that math is going to run you out of house and home because you you can control it um, on the liability side by not overpaying claims on the property side um, you have to cover all the perils you know you can't cover you can't be half pregnant and get the money you got to be all the way pregnant Collect the money, and then when the claim comes, you can go make a happy customer. But if you can't pay your deductible, or you can't come up with the flood insurance, or, you know, mudslide wasn't covered, I mean, it's just, I can't believe it. I'm an insurance guy, and I can't believe some of these exclusions. Mudslides is the last one that, you know, has hit the radar because of Utah and California. Yeah. You know, now everybody knows it's not covered, and everybody's suing everybody. And what does the homeowner do? I mean, I, I don't know what they do. They lose. I can find out. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. All the people down here in Florida, it's just like a slow, um, you know, I, I would never do it. I, and again, my own stuff down here, I fixed it. You know, I'm not messing around. The people that we had claims on, we, we paid them. They have their money. They're either fixed or fixing it. You know, there are supply chain issues, but. And, and we could hold back money, say, well, it's not here yet, but that, that's not a good move either. You need to make sure you pay it so it's on its way here. And if it doesn't show up, they don't blame you because you didn't pay. So yeah. Do the right thing. Keep it simple. I think it's fine print and exclusions on everything you buy. That's, you know, that's what nobody reads and everybody should. And then, you know, buy a personal policy that gives you what you want. And um, there is a solution. You know, there's obviously firearms policies and dog policies. And I like our new all-in-one, you know, personal liability policy. We schedule it. We also offer that in, a, in a, what we call a true umbrella. And we come down and pick up. You know, whatever liability it is, ATVs, you know, if you own an ATV, if you rent one, it's covered because you own one. If you don't list an ATV and you go to rent one, you can add it right on your phone, um, you know, as an endorsement to your schedule. So we do want to make it easy once you're a trusted partner or at least a known partner, right? Trust comes over time and tests, but. Mm -hmm. And people need to report stuff to their insurance company. If you buy insurance and you get in an accident and then you think, should I, should I report it or not? It kind of proves that you don't, you don't trust your insurance company. 
right? If you hired a lawyer on retainer and you pay them 10 grand for the next thing, would you be afraid to call him? Hell no. You'd be calling him in 30 seconds. Anytime somebody threatened you or said something wrong, I'm going to sue you, you know? So that's kind of the easy test. I, I said, well, oh, I don't want to report it. You know, I'm trying to get a clean loss run. I'm like, yeah. So you want to be a clean, you know, no story at all. How about some good stories like I got? <laughs> <laughs> at least have fun while you're doing it, man. Uh, anyway, mm. it's not always bad. People who've had claims, you know, hopefully they learned their lesson. And some people just got unlucky and they're a better risk than they ever were before. You know, they had cheap coverage. Now it's been canceled. And again, they're a better risk than they were before. Some people. Some people are going to continue to, you know, do stuff that puts them in a bad position if somebody wants to take pot shots at you. So, you know, as I get older, it's like sports and all that stuff. You know, I used to, a couple of years ago, like still try and jump the motorcycle and stuff. And then all of a sudden you crash. And, you know, it's not like when you were young, right? So, Hopefully, as you get older, you figure out thinking ahead of the ball, down the jump, you know, what's down there and how am I going to get hurt? And picking the right partners is, you know, I mean, everybody tells their kids that, right? Because you see your kids when they're young, you know, hanging out with good people and bad people. and Everybody has to learn that, I guess, slow over time, but... <laughs> I, I give everybody a chance. Um, I think that's, you know, somebody else says, oh, he's a bad guy. This I say, well, thanks for the info. I'm going to check it out myself, and I'm going to have my own experience with that person because there's a lot of people who have ulterior motives, which kind of brings us back to, you know, what we were talking about to begin with, with who's behind this. I think that there's probably a lot of people behind it, right? Gun yeah. haters, you know, the homeowners companies that are telling the department, look, we, we, we would write homeowners, but we need to exclude dogs and animals because it's 243 million a year in claims. You know, and every year there's this press release by insurance companies that touts this animal liability, you know, how it's losing the money. Um, but then on the other hand, the shareholders meetings, oh, it's all, you know, we're making money. Everything's great. So they yeah. tend to talk out both sides of their advertising. Yeah. I just oh. looked up the, the source of the study was lending tree who offers an insurance product. Um, so, you know, obviously insuring each individual firearm with different policies somehow would be better I, I don't even know man that sounds like a whole issue in and of itself like for the company right because then you have to have underwriting for each individual item it doesn't sound like a winning profit for me it sounds like something that just would take too much effort when you can just do one policy and cover all the well, things well, it sounds like to me they um want to do it as part of a financing lending tree is the name of the company yeah and they have an insurance division Oh, so that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know what their flagship product is. I'm pretty sure it's, it's financing for like mortgages and whatnot. Right. But, uh, well, but their insurance business, uh, yeah. again, I think it's a service provider. So when they give you a loan, right, they may be a progressive agent. I mean, yeah, Geico, progressive, all of these companies are now, when they, when they sell a bundle now, you'll get a traveler's policy. You'll get, you know, some other company and because they all think they know what they want, right? So it's almost like flow and, you know, progressive tells you who's cheaper. reason they started doing that is because when they underwrote you, if they wanted more money, they'd tell you who to go to that would cheaper. Right. And and that gives them kind of the last bite at every apple to decide whether they want to beat the price or not. Yeah. But, you know, to me, it's you get what you pay for. Right. What you want is cheap insurance. I can guarantee you, you better read the fine print and be heads up. And you should want good insurance that covers you properly. And you understand what a claim looks like. 
and I understand what a claim looks like, whether it's flood, what's going to happen, how much you're coming up with, how much I come up with. If you get arrested for firearm violation, what are we going to do? You know, are you going to hire me a local lawyer? Are you going to defend me? You know, those are all the things you want. You don't want a policy that does half of the job or you have to pay the first portion of or it runs out of, you know, protection. Um, so, you know, and again, multiple policies for each gun would mean each gun would have its own limit. That That's probably, you know, as they're trying to find a company to, you know, write the coverage and it'll probably be Lloyd's of London or, you know, maybe they can't because of their, their rules on firearms, but they'll definitely be approached on it. Um, but, you know, again, for me, if you have a hundred guns, I would issue you a policy, but depending on our strategy and what you do, you know, I don't know what the limit is that they're pushing, but I know in California, wasn't it like hundred thousand dollars or something that they passed in I think Sacramento? You have to minimum of a hundred. Yeah. That's what I thought I heard. I mean, dogs are 50, 50,000 is what the dog catcher makes you buy in most states if your dog is deemed dangerous and if you don't pony up the insurance they're going to euthanize your dog and you know it could be for killing a cat it could be for biting another dog getting a fight with another dog biting a person um so you know it's, it's similar to that but obviously if you're a wealthy person you need more than fifty thousand, right but if you know, you're buying it per gun, um, you know, and you need a million per gun, that's that's not going to be doable. That's that's a stupid way to approach it. Yeah. You know, yeah. A, a personal policy where you schedule all the guns and you give them, you know, the way we normally do it is a per person limit with a per event limit and then an annual aggregate limit, which would be, you know, whatever... Like if you're buying a half a million dollar homeowners, that's what the aggregate would be on the firearm. For a person, you'd have maybe a hundred or two fifty, um, and you do that because if in these situations, if somebody is shot and one of their family members sees it, if they're in the zone of danger. You know, you, you witness this happen. Each individual has their own separate claim. So, you know, you don't want to have one limit that one guy gets the whole thing and then you get a second and a third lawsuit and you, you go bankrupt anyway because you can't, you know, handle the volume. So um, splitting it up like they used to in the old days, um, you know, with auto insurance, that's how it started. That's everything. Now it's called CSL or combined single limit. And you have a half a million or a million or 10 million, whatever they buy. But, you know, it's kind of like a one event insurance. Because if you ever have your black swan day, that lawyer is going to go after that whole pile of money. And, you know, I tell the rafting companies, you know, if you do it that way, you got three trips in the Grand Canyon at one time. And you have 28 more scheduled. And if you have an, an event, Somebody's injured, you, they medevac them out, trip ends, nobody does anything. You know, everybody just keeps going on, but you could be out of insurance because that one event could eat up that whole policy the way you're buying it. So, you know, there needs to be more strategy and less, you know, design and them thinking, oh, this is, or these are the people or classes of business we want to write because it fits our box and where we're concerned, we can add these exclusions, which protect us. Right. And it's same way with the big reinsurers. They, you know, if I pay them portions of money, they always try and put in an event cap where they get an exit hatch and they get a leave and the primary company goes broker that much faster, having paid them a portion of all the premiums. So, you know, I don't buy that kind of reinsurance. I just look at them and say, you think I'm stupid? 
that's how most people buy insurance because they're trying to grow a business, right? They're trying to form an insurance company. And then once they get to a certain point, oh, you can't do it without reinsurance. So it was a crappy little insurance company, which I was, you know, you, I bought that crappy stuff. Like in Katrina, you know, my reinsurance went up in a, you know, smoke. And, um, you know, I survived it. I had to pay all the claims. But the 14 insurance companies down here in Florida went broke. You know, they're, they can't survive because they gave too much of the money away to all the service providers. And, uh, you know, they don't provide the right coverage. So it, it sounds are, like the insurance version of fractional lending that banks do. Well, yeah. it's like if, if you do that and then everybody decides to withdraw and want their money back or, you know, as an insurance agency, if you have to pay out a, a lot of claims at one time and you don't have that money in the bank account, then poof, there it goes. There goes the company, there goes your wealth, there goes everything. Yeah, and again, I think, you know, you said insurance agency, and that's what most people, like all the agents down here in Naples, you know, their life right now, it's a hellhole, right? Their people have claims, they sued, you know, and most of them have public adjusters and they're suing. So your insurance agent trying to get you new coverage, you know, one of the questions the company asks is, do you have any open claims? Or did you have a claim in the storm? And so um, insurance agents are really trapped in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. They want to sell insurance where the buyers want cheap. So they go out and they try and get the cheapest markets. They want to be competitive. Well, you know, after events like this, they their lives are a hellhole too. Yeah. You know, but premiums go up. And if they can survive it, you know, they, they, uh, benefit from it, um, as much as anybody, but we all got to work together. That's what it's about, but you can't work with some people. And so as you get older, you learn to pick better partners and have a strategy and a plan for what ifs is that's what you really need to be focused on is getting through the tough times. Everybody can make it through the easy times. Yep. Take care of the downsides and the upsides take care of themselves. Before we let Rick go, let's, I want to talk about helicopters. So (laughs) at the very beginning, you were in front of the, the X insurance helicopter. And I've got to ask, do you insure or have you been asked to insure the uh, helicopter hog hunting uh, guides in Texas? Yeah, I, I insure a couple of them. I mean, I, I, you know, I, we insure aircraft, but, um, the biggest company that we competed against with the helicopter hog. And I've been down there and went hog hunting with, um, the guys I insured. And you know, I've been a number of times down there. The only time I think one time we saw a hog run across the fields, one guy shot it. But during the day, there, you know, there's not a lot of hogs like you see on them. And uh, that's kind of a good example of, you know, all of the social media is what you see there. I'd, I'd like to see that. That would be damn fun. I mean, I just flew from Cocoa Beach here to Naples. Everybody says there's pigs here too. And I was looking pretty damn hard. <laughs> I didn't hear <laughs> pigs. I saw some deer. Um, but, uh, you know, and I, I bought a night vision and a uh, thermal scope down there, and we had a good hog hunt one time at night. Um, but that was the best hog hunting I've had down there. The helicopter's fun flying around in, but, you know, you want to, sh- I want to shoot a lot. I don't want to yep. ride yep. around looking at something and they let you kind of shoot at the targets when, before you start. We must have, Jared and I, we must have had a really unique experience because we went down and we worked with a guy uh, who flew. He was headquartered out of Houston, but we didn't actually. We went down and, uh, you know, in in southeast Texas, there's a lot of rice fields. uh, Yeah. And he had contracts with farmers down there to to cull hogs, and we killed a bunch. Oh, yeah, and coyotes. hogs. Yeah, we killed coyotes and hogs for three days. You need to give me his name because <laughs> that's you know it's like yeah I just I just kind of racked it up to like fishing you know sometimes we go 
Sometimes you catch fish, sometimes you don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, in, in Texas, the hotter it gets, the harder it is to to kill the hogs. You, the only time they're moving, you know, they only move around the daytime when it's cool out. Uh, and when right. it gets when it gets hot, they don't move. That's why you got to hunt them at night. And they get smart, too. Yeah. So, Rick, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day. Uh, I know we're almost an hour into this now, but time just flies when we're talking. But uh, I'm sure that our audience truly appreciates a little bit of enlightenment uh, because let, let's face it, there's so much rumor out there that, you know, and, and people, uh, I think a lot of times people just, uh, you know, they, they get into a situation where it sounds good and they have no idea whether it's good or not. So they just accept it. And right. it, it, it's good to give them information and give them something to, to truly think about. And yeah. we got to figure out a way to, Make sure that X Insurance knows that when student of the gun listeners come to them, <laughs> that we get credit for it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? So how do you do that? Where, where? How do you do it elsewhere? Ah, that's it. We could we could put, um, and you know, I would say we need to do it for, you know, everything we do is agent friendly because we're actually. The insurance company, Prime Insurance Company, it's a rate. It's in all fifty states. I can issue up to hundred million dollar limit with my reinsurance support. But um, you know, there's a bunch of brokers and agents out there that historically have you know been appointed by Lloyd's and other markets to distribute their capacity. So almost like when the bank changed and they stopped, you know given countrywide home loans who wasn't a bank um you know a, a bunch of authority to write bad loans and they went to town on it as well as everybody else did but um so that's kind of dried up that's why the insurance market you know if you appoint somebody to be your bank you know home loans division they lose your money you shut it down same with uh, insurance companies that give their pen away and um so you know there's a lot of those people that are getting out of it and selling cyber insurance or something else so you know as far as the firearms liability that's why i think you have the options you have which are very focused firearm um agents local agents and brokers they may be gun enthusiasts but they don't know right but, you know if they're a shelter agent or a farmer's agent they got enough to deal with than asking an underwriter to, you know, give you firearms liability or, you know, criminal uh, uh, allegations protection of assault and battery or whatever. They're not even going to ask, you know, they're, and they, they'd be told no anyway, because insurance companies are trying to restrict or narrow the, the range of coverage. So now again, agent friendly, any local agent called this, we want to give student gun credit if they do it. Um, they can obviously tell us, right? Um, but we should be able to put something on the website and have a code, shouldn't we? That's where Jared comes in. Who's your, who's your boy in, 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 uh, in Salt Lake? Yeah. Uh, Brian and I have been discussing there you a, go. a few different options. We need to so get I'll Brian and Jared's brains together with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we just need to, my, you know, again, I like keeping stuff simple. I would say we need to tell agents or insurers, you know, go to xinsurance.com and put this code in. Um, you know, I, I don't know how long that would take to get set up. I don't think it can take too long, or we could even just start a separate page for student of the gun, and then we would know it's coming through that. Yeah. That's something that I'm, but man, JD I, JD Brown is my IT guy, and I got a staff of I don't know, you know, more than I think I need. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm the dumb guy, so I, uh, that's JD funny. helps me and gets that shit done. And if we um, do it, you know, I can get it done pretty quick. So. What do you guys think? What's, I mean, I don't, I don't know that much about it. I got like 5,000 jobs. So I have no idea how many listeners you have, how much traffic you think, you know, this is going to become. And 
obviously the traffic has more to do with the trend. Yeah. Right? The more people see this as an issue or required to do it, um, you know, then I think we'll be ahead of the ball because I do think over the next five years, it's going in one direction. It's going that direction. Yeah. And yeah, my my thing with uh, like with concealed carriers, especially, you know, our audience here that's listening and you guys live that are listening live right now, chime in if you disagree with me, but I think that it's weird to think about that concealed carriers, right? They're, they're carrying a gun every single day because, well, we, cause I'm a concealed carrier as well. We, we carry a gun every single day because of that black swan event that may happen in our life where we have to defend ourselves. We carry med kits because we might have to save the life of our wife, our children, ourselves, whatever that is, our, our loved ones. But then when we look at insurance, we're like, I don't really need that. It's like, that's not, that's not true. It's the same thought process, right? If you want to cover yourself in the defense with a firearm or or in the healing with a med kit, then you should also think about covering yourself in the legal defense portion of that with uh, some sort of insurance that is underwritten. And so that's, you know, I, you guys that are listening live. Chime in if you either already have a policy or you're looking for a policy, because that's you guys, the listeners are the ones that'll give us the true, um, the true, I guess, feel would be the right term for feedback. If, if, yeah. The feedback, you know, give us feedback. If this is the right direction, right? If you're interested in this product, then, then we'll spend a little bit more time making something work together with Rick. But if you're not, then it's not worth wasting either of our time to set up anything specific for a uh, student of the gun audience. So I'd love to hear from the listeners if it's something that you're already doing or if you're interested in moving forward with it. Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, chat, I'll, uh, we, we got to get moving there. But uh, the one thing that, that we have, I, Rick, and I've been, we've been experiencing this for years and years and years, is people come to us and say, what is your recommendation for insurance for gun owners and carriers and so on and so forth? And I've really, I've never been able to give them a, a good solid answer because I don't want to give people an answer if I don't know 100% that, that I can. You know, I don't recommend products that I don't believe in or, or I don't have experience with. And, you know, with our conversations with X Insurance, it's the first time I've really felt confident telling people who listen to us, hey, contact them, talk to these people. Uh, you know, that we, you know, five, six, seven years ago, we had the NRA carry guard and people said, yeah, you should do that. And then poof, it's gone, you know. Right. Well, and again, I, I think that's a great point because everybody knows how big the NRA is, right? They had a deal directly with Lloyd's of London and locked in the biggest broker, private broker in the world, I think. Um, And they lost it. They couldn't keep it together. And then, you know, now you have all these other guys that are, you know, making a good attempt at trying to provide a product that, you know, would really be helpful to individuals and the community as a whole. Because all of us people who think the same, um, you know, we need something different than the people who think the other way. And so, you know, the the opportunity is big. It'd be interesting to know, like a survey of, you know, how many, you know, of people that you guys, you know, talk to or involve how many of them have you know uscca how many have this and have they ever actually you know thought about what does the claim look like what does it do when and if that happens and you know how am i going to be treated and that's what i i discuss with everybody and i i design it based on that i was like so how do you how can you Right? How how can you live up to your end of the bargain? Because for me to give you a big deductible you can't pay and a cheap price, it's kind of disingenuous. Yeah. We actually have to agree a plan we can execute on. And having that flexibility is what, you know, I've successfully assembled to be able to do in all 50 states nationwide, you know. if I insure somebody in New York State, 
and the state says, you can't issue a firearms policy, I say, I don't issue a firearms policy. I issue a liability policy to my insured, and it, it has no firearms exclusion, has no assault and battery exclusion. You, you can't prevent me from doing that. But they can stop you from offering firearm liability. So I think that's the most extreme. The two states that my crew came to me and said, we can't do it here, we can't do it here. I'm like, bull. <laughs> I've been doing this too long for me to buy that you know, line. And it's a strategy. You don't sell firearm liability. And, you know, I have those. Uh, if there's an insurance commissioner listening on the phone and Washington or New York, uh, you know, they tend to listen to my stuff. Lawyers do too. You know, they always go to the judge and talk about how Mr. Lindsay does all this stuff. And I think the judges are happy somebody showed up to do the right thing. At least the good <laughs> one. <laughs> That's funny. I was just uh, looking at the, the this book called The Four Pillars of Fighting. It was written by James and it was finished by my dad, Paul Markle. And uh, he said in here in the mindset portion there's a portion on legal fee assistance so if james yeager and paul markle think that it's a good idea to have insurance legal fee assistance um x insurance is actually mentioned in this book for home ccw firearms trainers etc i wonder um, how that happened yeah i wonder how that happened i wonder who put that in there but if, if they know. if those two guys that are leaders in um mindset tactics skill and gear and talking about that stuff then it's probably a good idea to have uh, Indeed. Holy so, shit. Rick, we're we're not going to keep you much longer. We really appreciate your time. It's been almost an hour here. Uh, my biggest takeaway is that uh, Rick likes to be airborne, and instead of ramping motorcycles because he he said he doesn't heal as fast now, he decided to buy a helicopter so he can be airborne. <laughs> my biggest takeaway. There you All go. Right. And, uh, where where do people go to find more about X Insurance? Just xinsurance dot com. There you go. There's your X, marching orders, guys. X going to give it to you. That's right. X going to give it to you. All right. Thank you very tell much, Rick. To, tell, tell them to, uh, my email's on there. Anybody right now, um, you know, we, we definitely want to work with you guys. So they should send, when they go to the website, send me an email and mention student of the gun. And we'll, there we'll you get, go. Get, get it identified now as we work on a future solution huh? yep there you go guys marching orders All xinsurance.com right. make sure that you let them know send send rick an email you came from student, student of, the of the gun sent you yep Our, my email is rjl at xinsurance.com <laughs> you're brave you I, hope that brave becomes, <laughs> I hope he thinks that was a mistake next week <laughs> <laughs> it can't be a mistake this is this is it okay. and that's this right. is what i set it all up um, for you know being able to say find out find solutions and execute in all 50 states is what i couldn't do in the 80s and 90s i had to depend on some big dumb insurance company and then lawyers and a bunch of other people now you know i have the ability to execute nationwide, manage claims nationwide, AM best, you know, gives me an A rating and uses Prime as an example to other companies because of the way we do business. But, um, you know, I'm not really fond of any rating agency or regulators because it took a long time for me to get where I am because they make it very difficult, very hard. You know, it's highly regulated business, but the big companies, you know, AIG and Hartford were broke in 08. How's that happen? And they never lost their A rating. So it's still a stupid business and it's a challenge every day. The way I win and the way I feel good about doing all this is I meet good people all the time. So all the good people email me. The other guys email me. Hopefully we can make you good people. There you go. <laughs> well, when you get back okay. to the great state of Utah, we should yeah. get together and have a cigar. Okay. Well, I may come out and see you, or if you're driving through Heber any time, call me. I'm gonna, I'll be there tomorrow for like the next 10 days. Well, there you go. Cool. Get together. Okay, guys. 
All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Rick J. Lindsay of X Insurance. Let them know Student of the Gun sent you. Thanks, guys. You yeah, it. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. I'm glad that we uh, had that opportunity to talk to Rick, and, and I'm glad that you guys had the opportunity to listen uh, to Rick and get some, well, basically some from the horse's mouth information. And because uh, we have for a long, long time, a lot of you guys out there in the audience, you're like, well, what do you, what do you recommend, Paul? What do you guys recommend? And, and quite frankly, I've had a really hard time. I've, I, you know, I didn't want to just jump in and recommend one of these gun insurance companies because I wasn't really so sure about them. You know, we, we thought that NRA's carry guard was going to be the thing and then pff, they exploded. So, uh, I, I think that, uh, and, and we said this into the discord, um, but if you're going to have overall liability insurance, rather than get a homeowner's policy and a car policy and a this and that, uh, and then go to another company and get some kind of a gun carrier owner's policy. If you do X insurance, they can do, they'll do your car and your motorcycle and your guns and your dog and your snowmobile and your whatever. So it just makes sense. All right, let's move on, moving on, moving on. Do we have a review of the week or we just want to jump into the Duracoat finish firearm segment of the week, Jared? Uh, let me get to the review of the week real quick i uh completely spaced on that so let me look well we can do the the finish firearm yeah well, i'll move the review of the week down to okay afterwards. all right zach bump us into the the finish firearm All right, Durco Finish Firearms of the Week. And we were talking about uh, custom Durco projects. We're talking about the sexy high point thing. We're talking about all that. And somebody out there in the audience uh, pontificated. They're like, oh, how about a hippo gun? And then Zach said, he offered you guys, he said, if you guys want to do a hippo gun, I'll give you the template. I'll give you the for the official student of the hippo. Because we've got a, an official student of the hippo icon that Zach created. Well, it's funny how things line up. It's funny how the universe lines up because <laughs> we were talking about a hippo gun, student of the hippo, and bing, bang, boom, we have another. You're like, come on, Paul, this isn't this an old story. No, this is a brand new story. And <laughs> <laughs> when we get hippo stories, I just, I just love it. So we've got a story from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, don't drink the water. Um, this is from May 16th, 2023. The source is wood TV.com. Got wood. Um, got wood. Got wood. I don't know. Do you? But uh, wood TV. If I. Could, would you? Uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, W O O D. How much would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck Norris? Yeah, well, you better stay away from the hippo. That's right. Pygmy hippo attacks, kills Sitatunga at John Ball Zoo. A pygmy hippo attacked and killed a Sitatunga, a medium sized antelope, at John Ball Zoo. In a release sent out Tuesday evening, the zoo said that the attack happened during a controlled introduction between the hippo and a male Sitatunga named Chopper. They shouldn't have given it a name. Chopper got first chopped. Group. Yeah, it was their first mistake. The two had visually been introduced throughout the last month in preparation for them to be in a new multi-species habitat together. Those meetings went well. <laughs> so they, they, they like walked them both up to the fence there's like a fence between them. They're like, hungry hippo, meet chopper. Chopper, meet hungry hippo. Hungry, hungry and, hippo. Uh, oh, you got trained animal staff. Yeah, brought chopper in the hippo habitat for a controlled introduction when the pygmy hippo suddenly attacked. Wow. I've never seen a hippo attack in real life, so I'm not sure how sudden it actually is. Well, uh, they're really strong. 
Yeah. That's true. Hippos are deceptively fast, which is part yeah, of why they're, they're so they're scary. A lot of muscle. Yeah. Zoo staff. I need to do something. You need to do something. Zoo ah, staff. Fixed. Okay. Awesome. Zoo staff immediately separated the animals and the animal care team tried to resuscitate Chopper. Uh, they were unsuccessful. <laughs> they tried to resuscitate him, huh? They gave him mouth to mouth. Uh, the zoo CEO says, quote, the zoo has successfully introduced species many times and our staff was thoroughly prepared for this introduction. This sad incident reminds us that despite enormous cautionary measures taken by zoo staff over the last several weeks, the behavior of wild am- animals can be unpredictable. No. Yeah. What? <laughs> Here's the deal. That what, what the what we're, we're it's like a Disney movie. Everyone's like a pygmy hippo. They're so cute. Pygmy hippos can weigh up to six hundred pounds. Okay, I know somebody has video of this. Yeah, I don't know. Was it? Does it? Sh- was it during public? Were the was the public there? Well, I'm sure that they filmed the introduction of new animals because if Probably. you can, if you can get a good one then it's probably a popular video. Although yeah. this would be a more popular video because the internet is savage. Yeah. So pygmy hippos go four to 600 pounds and can be up to six feet long. Six feet long from tail to nose, three feet high at the shoulders. So you're like, wow, they're just, I've seen pygmy hippos in the zoo. We've been, you know, they're splashing around in the water, pooping in it, you know, doing their thing. Uh, But they're hippos. And hippos are mean. (laughs) It's not a Disney movie where they dance on their toes and tutus. Hippos are mean. They're territorial. They're, you know, and and I, 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 Hippos I love how not, hippos should not be sharing. They don't want to share an environment with anybody, including people. Hippos yeah, like to have their and, own space more than any other animal. It says, it says the behavior uh, more than anything else. It says just blah, blah, blah. The behavior of wild animals can be unpredictable. I don't believe no. it. What? There's a reason why in the zoo that animals are kept in their own enclosures with their own, like, because in the wild, they kill each other. (laughs) Like, if you want to have, like, pygmy goats and rams in the same enclosure. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. There's, like, omnivores or or herbivores. You know, they put herbivores together. They'll put, like, the zebras and the and the antelope and the yeah. stuff. They'll put them in the same enclosures and what have you. But then when you introduce the alligators in there. No, the alligators will kill them. The, the crocodiles saying. will kill them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the, the cheetahs, the lions, you know, they, they'll kill them. And the hippos are like, oh, hippos are, like, hippos are mean. <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that hippos weren't mean? But they look so cute. I know they do. And they will yeah, they will stomp you in the ground. It's it's like uh we we just saw your mother and I a cow moose uh the other day. Uh, it was right by the highway on the ranch in Wyoming. Uh it was walking it, well, it wasn't 50 yards away from where we were. We were in the car and we stayed well the truck and we stayed in the truck because as as cute as they look and interesting as they look, a moose moose are mean and they will stomp you into the ground. And, and what happens if you hit I, one I know with your bull- car? What's that? As it, and what happens if you hit one with your car? It, it will fall into the passenger compartment and crush you to death. Yeah. So yeah, um, but yeah, moose will stomp you into the ground, man. They are they're not your friend. They don't want to be your friend. They might look cool and interesting. Look at them from a distance. Uh, and hippos are the same way. So uh, <laughs> the Duracoat Finish Firearm segment today is if you want to do a hippo gun, uh, Zach will contact Zach directly and he'll give you the 
the hippo template, <laughs> the student uh-huh. of the gun hippo template, uh, and you can do that. Maybe, maybe if you did the uh, the ten mil, if you needed to defend yourself from a hippo, I don't know, could you do it with the ten mil? <laughs> I can only imagine if you shot a hippo between the eyes enough times that it would stop. <laughs> it would it would get annoyed and say, okay. All right, you win. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask. I wonder, you know, Bill's a big handgun hunter, and I think he's killed most of the stuff on the continent with handguns, primarily 44 Magnums. I wonder if Bill killed his hippo with a 44 Magnum. I'm going to have to ask him. I'm going to have to ask him. And where would be an put interesting the, thing? Where did he put the bullet? I'm guessing like right below the eyeball because uh, you got to shut the brain off or they're going to stomp you in the ground. Uh-huh. Why would you kill a hippo? You know how much meat is on a hippo? Imagine hippo ham. A, mark, a market hog only five times, six times, seven times the size. Like the average market hog is like 120 or something like that. I think 120, 130 if my memory serves me right. And the amount of meat and stuff that you get, hams and bacon and all that you get from a market hog. Imagine that like five to seven times bigger or 10 times bigger. That's a lot of meat. That's a lot of protein. Uh, but we do have a review of the week, and it comes to us from from Chuck, uh, from Carlos on Discord. Jared? Yes. Carlos F. from Discord says, I've been a grad program member since 2015, and that's almost 10 years at this point. Good job, bro. Yeah, thanks. We appreciate you. This show has been the best thing for me, and it is a great community to be in. I still learn something new every time listening to the SOTG crew. Thanks, Carlos. We appreciate that. That's That's a glowing review. If you guys that are listening right now are not members of our grad program, go to getsotg.com. Join the the uh, member proclaimed best thing for them. And uh, then you can be part of the community as well. There you go. Indeed, indeed you can. So we just talked about, uh, we're, we're going to have to do the research there. We're gonna have to do some research and, uh, and figure out if, uh, if a 10 millimeter is a, I mean, I suppose if if something is trying to, if a wild animal is trying to make you dead, anything you have in your hand is better than a stick or a rock. So, you know, that's true. That's true. So, What if all you have in your hand is a stick or a rock? Well, then I guess it's going to be an interesting day for you. (laughs) Uh, The latest addition to the Student of the Gun channel on Juxy.com is the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 2.0. Is it accurate enough? Yours truly took that gun out there, and I shot at uh, steel targets. I shot at a steel plate, which was about the size of a head, at 15 yards, and I shot at a half silhouette uh, at 25 yards, and well, I won't spoil it for you, but you're not, you're, you may or may not be surprised at what you're you not going to believe what happened in this video. You need to go you watch it. You won't believe it. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> slash Juxi, J-U-X-X-I. Yes. Yes, indeed. Unbelievable. So there you go. So, uh, yeah, if you want to do a 10 millimeter hippo gun, that would be that would be cool stuff. <laughs> All right, moving on. It's time for me to be quiet and for you guys to listen up. Attention new listeners, we produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right, all right, all right. We mentioned this, and it is true. 
Memorial Day is coming up. And what does that mean? Well, it means if you want a guitar, you could uh, get your butt over to Guitar Center. Uh, <laughs> that's when that's the that's when I buy stuff at Guitar Center is holiday weekends, because I've learned over time that uh, holiday weekends is when they're always running their specials. Well, Brown Elves is no different. And Student of the Gun is no different. And uh, they've got uh, Memorial Day sales going on. So if you want to save some money on your stuff, uh, you can get your butt over to brownolves.com. They've got, oh, at they, they're doing, I don't know who did this. Do you, remember, do you remember when this started, Jared, when the add to cart to see price started? Oh, yeah. It's the, there's a reason for that from a business I, perspective. Yeah, I noticed that a, a few years ago, maybe Part three or four online. years ago. I noticed that our uh, industry started doing that. Yeah, that they started doing the uh, the add to cart to see the price. So, um, uh, and, and it's not just Brownells; it's lots of lots of companies that are doing that. And, and generally, uh, it's a good deal. And you know, I'll do it. I'll throw it in the cart. I'll throw it in the cart and forget about it. <laughs> and then I'll get the uh, the notification. Hey, did you forget something? Hey there, buddy. Did you still want to buy that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Um, oh, one of the things that I did want to point out is you guys remember this la last summer. Jeez, it was last summer already. Last summer, we did the ARMED project, the ARMED, the minimum effective dose, and we used the KE Arms lower, the unibody lower to do the, the ARMED project. Well, if you'd like to do that, they actually have the strip lowers on sale right now. Uh, and if you, so a, a stripped AR-15, the lower, the, the uh, KE Arms lower, so what you get there is you've got your lower receiver component, you have your stock component, and you have your pistol grip component all in one. And so all you have to do is just add the, the guts, right? So if you add the guts uh, and put it in your cart, it's 79 bucks, 79 bucks right now on sale. So... Uh, I'm, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking if you had to go out, buy a lower and the pistol grip and the stock come and put it all on there, of course, you don't need a separate, separate, uh, buffer tube and all that because it's, it's a unibody. It's all one unit. I'm sure it would cost you more than 79 bucks for the stock, the buffer tube, the pistol grip, the lower receiver, all that. So if you were thinking, if you remember the ARMED project that we did, the ARMED, the minimum effective dose project that we did, uh, well, and you wanted to emulate that, now might be a good time because they've got this, they've got it on sale. Uh, the Memorial Day weekend, jump in, brothers. Zach, you know, or and, and Jared too. Remember when I did that project and uh, I deliberately put an upper receiver that did not have a uh, forward assist on it. Oh yeah, and I talked about I talked about that. Yeah. Well, guess what I just saw yesterday? Uh, I saw a notification from an article, and it said, "What is the forward assist, and do you really need it?" Well, there you I go. love it when when I do stuff, and then a year later, other people do it too. That's why you come to Student of the Gun Radio. That's why you follow us. That's why you're here. Because you know that we're about a year ahead of everybody else. <laughs> oh, come on, Paul. Is that true? Well, I don't know. It could be a complete and total coincidence. It could be. It could be a complete and total coincidence. Or it could be that we broke the ground first, and then after we did... After we took the risk, and we, Jared, how long have we been doing that? Basically, since we turned on these microphones? Yeah. We take the risk. Then after we've taken the risk, other people see that we took the risk, and then they're like, oh, well, they already talked about that, so it must be okay for us to do it now. 
but there you go. I thought that was interesting. I was like, wow, that's a, that's cool. That's cool that uh, you're doing that. Then, and this, this, I, somebody else actually used the term student of the gun in one of their articles. Did you see that, Jared? The article from 2018 on the truth about guns.com? I did not. It says, are you a, quote, high performer student of the gun? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, thought that was kind of interesting. That was kind of interesting that that, an, that another person who is a firearms instructor would use the term student of the gun in the title of their article. I wonder, Jared, why would you use the term student of the gun in the title of your article? Hmm? Uh, Search engine optimization much? I don't yeah. know. That's so funny. there you go. If you want to save money on pieces, parts, components, stuff, this this weekend is the time to do it. And I'm sure that Zachary, who is the shipping ogre, who is in charge of our store, I'm sure that he's probably got something in store for you. So perk up your ears, freaks, and listen up. SOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. Shop SOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeedy do. And over at ShopSOTG.com, this Memorial Day weekend, starting on Friday and running through Monday, you can get yourself 25% off our entire collection of amazing books and literature. That is right. For Memorial Day, we're going to help you feed your brain over at ShopSOTG.com. Get 25% off all of our books. There you go. Thank you. No, I don't want to save money. I want to pay full price. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, then, the, there, there is a tip option in the cart, so just add 25% of your cost onto there, and then, boom, you get to pay full price. Oh, There perfect. you go. Awesome. There you can tip Zachary, so, um, and I'm sure he would appreciate it. I'm sure he would shop. Well, SOTG. the problem is, though, if I add 25% of what my cart value is, it still won't be full price, so I don't know how to do this. <laughs> eh, close enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're trying to trick you into saving your own life again. We're trying to trick you into and being better educated. And that's us. We're just trying to trick you. Yep. All right. We've got a student of the gun homeroom, and we're going to talk about, well, the Green Mountain Boys. What that is. Yeah. What is that? What is that all about? I don't know, Paul. You tell me. Well, I will tell you as soon as Zach plays the cool music. All right. Well, this dovetails with a story from May 8th, 2023. I'm not going to get too far into this because um, it is, uh, well, it, it's going to infuriate me and I don't want to be infuriated, but we need to talk about this. So Vermont, the story is Vermont bans owning and running paramilitary training camps. The Republican governor, the rhino, Phil Scott, signed legislation in response to a firearm training facility So a firearm training facility built without permits that neighbors call a menace. So you have one one instance, and and apparently that's how we run America now. Uh, If there is an instance, there's a a single problem, what we're going to do is we're going to pass a law to punish everyone. It's like... uh, a is Democrat what? lunatic goes into a school and that murders children. That never happens. So, so what we're going to do is it's we're going to punish right wing extremists that do that. Yeah, right? that's right. Uh, we're going to punish everyone in the state who actually who wasn't there uh, and who never has hurt anyone. We're going to punish them. Well, how does punishing 
innocent law-abiding people stop criminals from doing bad things. But they never explain that. We we never get that explanation. We we get the we get the typical well, we have to do something. Okay. So, the something that we have done uh is is we have actually uh now Vermont, for those of you that don't know, Vermont is part of New England. And uh, it was part of the original uh, 13 colonies. And way back in the olden days, and uh, I got this from the, I'll just read it from Encyclopedia Britannica. The Green Mountain Boys, for those of you that don't know, the Green Mountain Boys uh, is actually an organization that was revered in the state of Vermont. And you're like, okay, well, who the F are they? The Green Mountain Boys were a, quote, patriot militia in the American Revolution. The Green Mountain Boys began, were formed in 1770 in present-day Bennington, Vermont, as an unauthorized militia organization to defend property rights of local residents who had received land grants from New Hampshire, New uh, from New Hampshire, New York, which then claimed present-day Vermont, disputed New Hampshire's right to grant land uh, to the west of the Green Mountains. The Green Mountain Boys stopped sheriffs from enforcing New York laws and, quote, terrorized the settlers uh, who had New York grants, burning buildings, stealing cattle, and administrating floggings. The Green Mountain Boys uh, immediately joined the American Revolution on May 10th, 1775, even though there were fewer than 100 of them. They were under the command of Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold, and they captured Fort Tyke. Yep, that guy. Like the furniture company? Nope. Yeah. Um, Ethan Allen is revered as an American patriot and hero of the revolution. The Green Mountain Boys captured Fort Ticonderoga, which was a BFD. They eventually became a part of the Continental Army and served uh, in the aborted uh, offensive against Canada. It didn't work out very well. So the history of the Green Mountain Boys, the history of Ethan Allen, those are, are things that are revered in the history of the state of Vermont. I met, I believe they even have a special flag or banner. So riddle me this, Batman. What kind of training do you suppose the Green Mountain Boys, the citizen militia, engaged in? Would you say that it was paramilitary training? Yes. You see, ladies and gentlemen, citizens being involved in paramilitary training and being involved in militias or training bands or being uh, citizen soldiers is as old as the nation itself. It's part of American history. And the idea, they're like, oh, well, well, this doesn't apply to to self-defense, but you're not allowed to engage in any training now, this is, this is what should scare you because the language is really broad and it's open to state interpretation. Uh, violators may face up to five years in prison and $50,000 fine or both. It prohibits a person from, listen to this, teaching, training, or demonstrating to anyone else the use of application or making of a firearm explosive or incendiary device capable of causing injury or death that will be used in the furtherance of civil disorder it also bans a person from assembling with others for train for such training instruction and practice and this was sponsored by the Gun Violence Prevention Group. 
founded by Gabby Giffords. So a Republican governor signed an initiative that was sponsored by the uh, Giffords Gun Violence, Anti-Gun Violence Coalition, or whatever the hell she calls it. Ladies and gentlemen, civil disobedience, the, the, the problem with this law is who gets to define that? Who gets to say whether your shooting school, your firearms training school, is a, quote, paramilitary school? So they, the state has granted itself the authority because according to them, citizens should not be allowed to possess that type of information or training. That's um. It, has anybody ever read this thing called the Second Amendment to the Bill of Rights? No, no. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Who is the militia? We talked about this ad nauseum. The militia is not the National Guard, F face, because the National Guard is under the control of the state. The militia is the people, the citizens, voluntarily engaging in training together. Not because they're being paid to, not because the governor told them to, because they're doing it out of a sense of civic duty. The entire, this, this law flies in the face of the founding of the country. That's where we're at now. We're at a position where a state can say, you know, that whole founding and creation of the United States of America that was done so, you know that, the King of England and Parliament considered the American, the citizens of America, the colonials, to be in direct violation of their civil disorder. They were all traitors to the crown. Washington, Jefferson, Adams, Madison, every one of them were considered to be traitors to the crown. And every one of them had a death sentence were they to be captured. Aren't you glad that they didn't? You know, people are like, oh, you know, you got to be a law-abiding citizen. What, what, what happens when the law is tyranny? What happens when tyrants use the law to control the people? What happens when tyrants use the law to strip citizens of their God-given rights? I don't know. You tell me. So, do you hear that sound? Hear that sound? That is Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys rolling over in their graves as the current tyrants of Vermont crap on their memories. So here's what we've done. We've decided we're going to give you, you guys out there in the listening audience, you people, you free American, you sovereign American citizens, you free citizens in the United States of America, we're going to, uh, well, we're going to make some training available to you. We have this thing called the High Elevation Precision Rifle Class that we hold in free America in Wyoming every summer. We have some seats available. And if you'd like to get in on that, we're going to let you save some money. And how are we going to do that, Jared? Money, 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 save money, money. Some money. Money, it's money, really money, easy. money. You go to getsotg.com. I'm going to do this with you right now. Now, at this moment in time, I just went to get SOTGU.com. That's not the right you place. You mean SOTGU. SOTGU.com. I'm glad I did this with you. 
live so that I could do that. And you click on reserve your class seat. Oh, there's a whole bunch of information about the class there. We've got um, student testimonials about the class and the instructors. Uh, student requirements, class information, everything there. Once you read that and you decide it's for you, and I know it is because you're here listening, click mm -hmm. the enroll now button, go there. There will be a another little blue lingy thingy by the total price that says have a promo code. And you're going to have one because I'm about to give it to you. Yes. You do you that, have a promo code? You enter the code GMB. It stands for Green Mountain Boys. And then you hit the apply button and you will save some dollar bills. You save some ducats off the total price there. And for those of you that want to pay in a single payment, you can do that. You want to break it up into smaller payments. You can do that also. Uh, it discounts both of those. So go do exactly what I just said. SOTGU.com. Read the instructions, class requirements, student requirements, etc. Click the enroll now button. Yes, indeed. Enter your promo code GMB. Save some dollar bills. That's right. GMB stands for Green Mountain Boys. Yeah, and join us at the end of July. It's July twenty eighth through the thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Uh, if you now we have the advanced the two the three hundred one class as well, high elevation precision rifle three hundred one, and that is the weekend after this one. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to do both of them, you can do that also. You just have to. If you're super me. motivated, man, do it. Jared at studentofthegun.com. Um, otherwise, it's basically a uh, invite only class because it only goes out to people that have completed the 201 course. Oh, we got some good stuff coming. All you guys who are taking the advanced class, you're going to you're going to be happy. Oh, you're, you're going to be excited about it. So, uh, yep, yeah, that's that's what we're doing for you guys. And we hope to see lots and lots of you, uh, lots of you there. But you can use the pro the promo code either Green Mountain Boys or just GMB and save ten uh, percent. And this is an all inclusive product, so you get the training, you get the lodging, you get your meals all together. So when you come here, all you have to think focus on is training. That's all you have to do. You Bring focus on the learning and the training, and we take care of your lodging and your food and you know the tuition and everything. Yep, you bring yourself, your rifle, and your ammo, and we have everything else taken care of. Comfortable yep. beds, great food, and uh, camaraderie with like yeah, minded individuals is, is awesome. Yeah, in fact, it's that's a, one of the most reported on from the students. It's one of the most reported reported on benefits of the yeah. course is the ability to spend time and the opportunity to spend time with um, uh, like minded individuals, liberty minded individuals. That yep. It creates that camaraderie that you may not have in your local community. Yeah, it's a it's an adventure of a lifetime. It really is. All right. Coming up on Thursday, Thursday, Student of the Gun University podcast. What is combat accuracy? I go into that and I talk about it. So if you guys haven't been following Student of the Gun University podcast, single topic, short form, easy to digest. All right. We've been going for a long time and uh, Wait. it is time. Okay. We do, we do actually have a question, uh, and I'm going to throw this one to Jared. All right. In the Discord, we have a question from Mitchell. Do you have a layaway without picking a class at the time? About the only way I can do that. Yep. Got it. There you right, go. Cool. So, so, so you what know. you want to do is yeah. reserve your seat for a future class. We can do that for you. Uh, there are requirements, uh, one of them being that you you have to choose a class within a year like we we can't hold on to that seat forever um but yeah you can do a layaway and once it's all paid up you have 12 months to pick the class and the seat that you want to attend there you go fantastic all right ladies and gentlemen make sure you join us tomorrow for the grad program bonus hour if you're not a grad program member go to get sotg.com that's get sotg.com sign up be here for the grad program hour uh, tomorrow and Friday. Until we're together again, I need you guys to remember this. You're a beginner once. You're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. 
And remember, you are a beginner once, a student for life.